what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? New Orleans quarterback Drew Brees was recently interviewed by Yahoo Finance, and he made some rather explosive comments. When asked about whether he thought it was a good idea for NFL players to kneel during the 2020 season, oh man, he came alive. He said, I will never have respect for anyone who disrespects the flag of the United States. He says sometimes when he stand and think of the flag, he cries. Why would he cry? He says he thinks about his two grandfathers who fought up to World War II for the country and all they went through. Hmm. It's always interesting when I hear his type speak about patriotism. They're grandpappy's fighting. You see, Drew, when I think of the flag, I also think about my grandfathers who fought up to World War II. And I also think about my uncles who fought in the Vietnam War. I think about my ancestors who fought in the Civil War for hopes of freedom and equality that eluded them till the day they died. Now, unless there's something special about you that I don't know, then you need to come clean because what you say don't make sense. You see, when I think about that flag, I also think about the thousands, the tens of thousands of black men who fought in the war and died. Who died trying to get freedom, trying to get equality in America, who fought in all of America's wars, who helped America win all of its wars. Let me say that again. I think about the tens and thousands of black men who fought in all of America's wars and helped it win, who never received equality, who never was treated like a first-class citizen, who went abroad and fought for America and couldn't even live in the same quarters as their white counterparts, who came back home and was hung on the streets of America, hung from backyard trees, chased down in pickup trucks with white men with shotguns and handguns, murdered, brutalized. I think about all of these black soldiers who fought for Drew Brees' freedom to be able to stand his whack ass up there or sit down, whatever the hell he was doing, and give that shitty ass interview, which he apologized for immediately, and which you knew he was going to apologize for, because that's what they do. That pressure, can, boy, you talk about pressure, he ain't seen a press like that. They put a full-blown blitz on his ass, and he couldn't stand the pressure. Coughed the ball up with an apology. Why even say it if you know you're going to apologize? That is the arrogance of white privilege. See, Drew Brees is looking at these atrocities, all of this injustice, through the lens of an oppressor. He's looking at it through the lens of privilege. And he don't want that privilege to disappear. So he can't see the empathy. 
He can't imagine it because it doesn't apply to him. So when he think of the police, he just think of all the good because the police are very helpful with white folks. You know, like white people really have to do something bad in most cases, not all. Sometimes you get those white cops who got a vendetta against certain white people and they go after them. I got that. But mostly white people feel very safe with, when it comes to the police. Remember the white woman, Amy, I believe Cooper in New York in the Bird Park when she apologized for calling the cops on the black bird watcher because he asked her to put a leech on her wild dog while in the bird park. She got offended. She said that she didn't understand. Maybe she was insensitive because she's always had a great experience with the police. What black people you know can say that? I've had a, my experience with the police has been great. It's been great. Not good, great. I don't know any black people that trust the police like that. Not even cops. Black cops got to go through shit too. Drew Brees is a sucker. I knew it was a reason I never liked him in the first place. He is a natural born sucker. The dude said he cries when he think of the flag. If you put yourself in our shoes for a moment, if you have, first of all, if you were brought into this country against your will, forced into labor, had your culture stripped from you, your name stripped from you, your family stripped from you, your men, women, and children raped at will with impunity, lynched, terrorized for hundreds of years. To this day, still being terrorized, Police officers still killing, still brutalizing. You just see video after video after video after video of this stuff. Still being denied the same right to just exist, to be able to go through your life unimpeded by racism. Put yourself in our shoes and tell me how patriotic would you be? Now, with all of that said, black people still try to get along, try to go through it. I still see many black people standing up when that national anthem is played, even though the national anthem was written by a slave owner. Third verse in the national anthem clearly talks about killing slaves, their ancestors. I won't stand for it, but many of them do because why? They just want to get along. They just want to be included. Everybody ain't got the same thickness in their skin. So with all of that, Black people are still saying, let's come to the table. Let's work it out. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a number of them out there right now saying, fuck all that. If I'm going down, let's get it over. If it's going to go down, let's get it over with. If it's going down, let's get it over. If you're going to hit me anyway, you're going to beat me anyway, you're going to shoot me anyway, well, I'm going to beat, hit, shoot back. Many of them got that mentality now. Now, a good gesture would be for everybody to just say, all right, all right, all right, all right, let's stop this shit. Let's stop this madness before it get out of control and even more out of control because I can guarantee you, I don't care how many guns people got. 
Maybe you can protect yourself. But how safe do you think those kids and women going to be while you out in the streets gunning all the blacks up? How, think you, how safe do you think they're going to be? How safe do you think your mama going to be? Your grandparents? And look, and this goes both ways. But the thing is, if you really come down to it, it's like, ah, there's enough black people out there that feel like they really ain't got nothing to lose because it's happening anyway. There's no stop to it. So I see a lot of white people that are jumping on board and, you know, trying to speak out against it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, they get it wrong. You know, how they want to express it, they get it wrong. I would tell you, if you're white, and you want to help the cause, listen to black folks. You know, even when you think you got all the answers, you ain't got you ain't got all the answers because there are black people who don't have all the answers. But listen to black folks. Listen to what black folks are saying. Listen to what black folks are saying and just ride the wave. Uh, we got more experience with this oppression thing than you. And the oppressor don't get to decide how to resist oppression. Keep that in mind. Drew Brees, you are a natural born sucker. Again, I am glad I never supported you. I knew it was a reason I never liked you. And I still don't. Apology unaccepted, sucker. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?